on transmission. Make sure if you guys have the video up, make sure Michal, you have headphones as well. And uh, mm -hmm. you have your videos muted. So it's not like, you know, sort of like echoing. Uh, anyway, I think we are live. So hello everyone. It's another session of quick art talk time. And today we are here with a special guest, our good friend that we actually met first time uh, last time during uh, Lightbox Expo, uh, Jeremy Fenske. Hello, man. Hey, thanks for having me. Awesome. I'm going to show your beautiful face because we don't have cameras yet. So you can Get see only going. our icons, icons, <laughs> but we can see Jeremy. So uh, you can say hi to our viewers. Uh, of course, for people who are watching us, you can um, also ask questions live. There's a chat. Um, and today we would like to talk about the journey of becoming an art director with Jeremy. So the voice yeah. is on you, man, and introduce yourself and let's go. Hey, I'm Jeremy Fenske. Uh, I've been a concept artist, mostly in games for about, uh, say, 11 years. And currently I'm an art director slash concept artist at a brand new game studio called Singularity Six here in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Nice. Tell us about the studio. I, you just we had like a good, useful conversation, but we have to sort of like you know uh -huh. expand on that, and we didn't want to spoil like all the stuff and just run out all the run out of all the subjects. So if you can tell us about the studio, because you, you told me some interesting stuff that it's being yeah. formed basically uh, recently, and how you you know you got into being an art director, and just just you know tell us whatever you know. We are really interested yeah. to hear the story. So yeah, like uh, like I said, I've been working in games mostly for the last uh, 11 years. I got started with um, ZeniMax Online, which is, if you guys probably know Bethesda, they work on uh, Elder Scrolls Online and Elder Scrolls and Skyrim and all yeah, those games. Yeah, we heard so, about them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's where I got my start. And I, I felt like uh, very privileged because uh, you know my work was really not good and uh, at the time. And at I was the just time so you were doing Elder Scrolls, you say? Yeah, you yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. And I... And I was just so fortunate to have that position, and I, I just wanted to learn everything I could about the game industry and how the, basically how the sausage is made, right? Um, <laughs> and that was always my favorite. I mean, that was my favorite time working in the industry is when we were small, because at the time we were a very small art team, and mm -hmm. just like, I all I cared about was making a good image. That's all like most students care about, but I didn't realize like the the machinery that happens underneath to creating a game was becoming more and more an interest of mine uh, with like 3D modeling, character art, like the, the whole process of implementation. And um, and that's something that kind of was always an interest of mine in the back burner. But, you know, six years working there, all I cared about was just making a good image and being a good concept artist. Um, and then I kind of got bored of that, as, as you do, working on the same project for six years. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> And I, I uh, started playing around, and uh, I ended up helping out with Destiny 2. Um, oh, basically, I worked in uh, a studio called Heinemann Studios in, in San Diego, and we okay. were all, yeah, we were so, an Activision studio. We were helping out. Uh, so what exact, what part exactly you were, uh, you know, responsible for? Like the game itself, or cinematics, or uh, the game? Yeah. The so game. when I joined them, they were. Uh, in the middle of Destiny 2, like wrapping that up. So I helped on, on um, we our studio, we focused on IO, the mm -hmm. planet. So we did a, did a lot of the early concept art for it, all the, you know, what the trees look like. You know, we did this like, um, uh, this kind of like desert environment. If you play the game, it's got this white and blue palette. Um, so mm -hmm. we did a lot of palette exploration. Um, and I came on as basically the environment painter that was going to, you know, do the big, pretty environment images to, to kind of inspire the team and, and mm -hmm. set a direction for the different locations. Um, so that was my first uh, uh, task working on Destiny 2. Then after that, um, we pitched them a bunch of uh, uh, ideas for expansions. So one of the ideas were was the uh, Tangled Shore, um, uh, which became Forsaken. Destiny mm -hmm. Forsaken, yeah. <laughs> so the Tangle Jaw is the name of the region, but Forsaken is the name of the expansion. So, um, yeah, we I had a such a blast working on that game. That's such a great IP. Uh, the artists, obviously, the artists at Bungie are just like the you know the top tier, right? Yeah. So the, the for next, me, it was just like the, the next level stuff, basically. I remember I, stuff. I just did like a 
from Destiny 2 and ongoing, I did like a, a concepts, concepts paintings for, uh, for cinematic and uh, like, you know, the blur was like developing all the cinematics and we were just cranking up the stuff that was not in the game or it was supposed to be in a game, but it's still not being designed or it's still not being, you know, uh, sort of conveyed in the studio. So we had like sort of like freedom, but at the same time we had those like, uh, like strict uh, limitation regarding the, the world itself. And it was still a lot of fun, you know, and, and just having an insight into, uh, into the uh, real concept art from the game was like mind blowing, man. It's like before even like all the art books and everything was released, like just, wow, this is yeah. like a good in-depth stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's one of the major things that I learned from working with them and just seeing their process was that, you know, they, they definitely have a, they put a lot of emphasis in the art and they let the art inspire the world and the story mm -hmm. where they, they kind of create these like incubators uh, in a sense of like an art team is going to incubate on this one idea and then they come out with this amazing art and then that art inspires the the designers to write stories and, mm -hmm. and, and create missions and whole worlds based around that. Like a um, chain reaction, huh? Yeah, it's like a, they're, they call them like blue sky or postcard paintings. They're, they're yeah. postcards that you start off with. So um, that's a that's a very similar method that I'm using in, in my studio right now. That I I definitely learned a lot from uh, working nice. with them. Yeah. Nice, very cool. Uh, what what I think people would be interested about is that are listening. How did you um, how did you land actually your um, because you said you were still a beginner and you considered yourself still bad when you're working on uh, the Elder Scrolls universe, which I think for a lot of people is still a big fucking dream to work on. So how <laughs> did you how did you kind of end up working there and how did you switch from the Elder Scrolls universe to uh, the Destiny universe? How right. how what what was your progress? Is was it a mixture of skill, perseverance, pure luck? Um, I mean, I'm sure it's skill, of course, mm. but uh, maybe that journey in specific will be nice. You know, it, it was a rough time because uh, when I graduated, it was around the 2008 uh, housing crisis, the, uh -huh. the, the financial crisis. So, um, you know. And what did you like, graduate from? Like a fine oh, art? Oh, I went to, uh, yeah, I was a fine artist. Uh, so I didn't even do any digital painting at all for my uh uh, for my uh, school and college, I, I basically just did oil painting and charcoal and drawing. Um, my thesis was a was like oil painted portraits and graphite drawings and stuff. So, um, but the digital you stuff... already wanted to be a concept artist. Oh yeah, like I think in in high school I knew I wanted to do concept art, and I was on the forums and on the side I was learning digital painting. Even all throughout college, I was, you know, when I get back from the studio, I would get on this in this or the the tablet at the time and yeah. uh learn photoshop and watch nomon videos and um my friends and no i we just, like, videos yeah. yeah we used to we used to each buy one like buy one nomon video and then we like trade them around and then <laughs> try to <do> <laughs> I like that's, pokemon cards no? that's the way yeah. you have to do it <laughs> yeah um yeah like the, make the, those uh, ian mckeg videos and stuff were just so inspirational um nice so, but I knew that I just really wanted to learn how to paint and draw really well because it's, I mean, those fundamentals are crucial to making uh, art for the entertainment industry. So um, I wanted to just solely focus on that. And I just didn't think the school offered a very good, like they didn't have any sort of entertainment design or anything mm -hmm. like that. So it was very like editorial illustration and it just didn't fit what I wanted to That's do. That's how we feel about all of Europe. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, like I, I just focused in the studio and just did a lot of painting and just learned fundamentals uh, about anatomy and drawing color and light, painting outside. And, and that was and then I could feed that back into my digital work as I was learning uh, how to digital paint. So exactly. Yeah. Fundamentals are fundamentals. That's exactly how we teach. So it is again, guys, you see, kind of very confirming to hear that for I'm an art director that, man, those fundamentals are uh, you can't bypass them, really. I mean, you can because there really are examples like that. But it is yeah. such a long road, and you're hurting yourself much. Whereas you just, when you learn the fundamentals, you can pop into you know the the design abilities while you're able to quickly showcase your ideas um, uh, with the skills that you learn. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, I do the same thing with my class all the time. Whenever I bring in a visiting artist and they repeat something that I told them, like, see, see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm doing. Yeah, sorry, I interrupted you. So, okay, so you, <laughs> you, you finished in 2008. 
right? Uh, you had only the fundamental skills, but uh, okay, so yeah. now I'm still very interested with those fundamental skills. Uh, yeah, how, so uh, how did you land a job with uh, with Bethesda? Basically, was it Bethesda uh, or Zenimax? It, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, they're the same, but uh, Zenimax Online was the development studio that I started with. Yeah, right, right. Um, uh, so I, I think part of it was just luck. Part of it was, you know, I, I don't know, actually. <laughs> Maybe they just thought it was cheap and they're like, we could just lowball this guy and he'll probably take any offer we give him. So, um, and at the time, that's that's actually very true. <laughs> I was probably just but, like, but hey, man, I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> with every time that you start off, it's like there's like a luck factor at all. Like it, yeah. there's actually a luck factor in, in everything we do. and. Yeah. I know people who are super good, but they don't get hired. And I know people who are like, yeah, I'm mediocre. And they just get a job and they, you know, level up very quickly, of course, by yeah. that. But um, since then, but at the same time, there's like a, that luck factor. It, it's in every industry, basically. You can just land job having like no clue. And then you either um, adjust yourself and succeed or you don't and you fail, basically, right? So... Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I just, I worked really hard. I mean, I come from the, the Midwest, which is, you know, more known for, you know, blue collar. the hardworking people of the America? The hardworking people, yeah. yeah right, yeah. right, right. Um, I, I've, <laughs> I started off working hard, and now I'm trying to do better at working smart, <laughs> I guess. Yes. As we go older, we have to, man. Yeah, working smart, being efficient, you know. Yes. Um, you are, in, how, how old are you right now? 30? Oh, uh, 33. Okay, so I think we are all like at this point in our lives that we just start to think yeah. like how to work, of course, as best as we can, but at the same time efficiently. Because of course, yeah, we yeah. are not 18 any, any, like 18 anymore, right? Yeah, yeah it's, so. it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. Like we got to... You got to take care of ourselves, you know, as we, as we get older, we get more responsibilities, you know, family and, and stuff. So um, you have to I had to think, you know, is this scalable what I'm doing? You know, I, I, for a while I was working full time, freelancing and teaching and I wasn't sleeping much. Um, and that kind of burnt me out <laughs> for a while. Yeah, so. and this is one yeah. factor, but at the same time, you are damaging your body. And like even like yeah. mental health, it, it's, it's totally. not something that we can sustain doing forever. I mean, like yeah. just juggling multiple things at the same time with no sleep. Of course, we still are going to work hard for probably by, by, the, end, by the end of our lives. Uh, for the rest of our lives but at the same mm -hmm. time you have to be smart with that it's like it's like a decision making and it's the yeah. way that you you know plan on your days because um, you just have to you just have to be responsible as you said right absolutely yeah yeah um yeah you got to take care of yourself number one you know um you gotta listen to your body if your body's uh tired or you're not getting enough sleep or stressed or depressed you know and that's something that um, I, I try to talk a lot about when I teach is the, the sort of mental game, not mm -hmm. just your drawing yes. game or your painting game, but exactly. how you're taking care of yourself. And because exactly. you you can get in the way of yourself more than anything else. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there are just some fears that are completely irrational and unnecessary when you're an artist learning to draw, learning to be a better concept artist that just knowing what those fears are and acknowledging them, you, you, you can better yourself in, in your mental game. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that I, I think it's very true because I've, I'm a good example of where I've suffered a lot in terms of that, like anxiety and depression, getting in your own way, getting in your own head. And mm -hmm. um, it's something that I've had to work through several times. I still do, you know? Yeah. Um, we are, art like we are, the, the, yeah. you are, you know, creative person, we are sensitive, you know, to some degree, you know, like it's, and you have like plenty of senses on the world and the way you perceive like a beauty or, you know, shapes or, you know, yeah. lighting and color is something that, you know, normal person probably just don't care about, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah. It, it all actually bumps your, your brain. And we talk a lot, we talk about it a lot with Michal that, for instance, you have this sort of like state of insomnia during the year mm -hmm. that yeah. you basically um, lay in your bed and you, you, you know and you feel that your body is 
weak and exhausted but at the same time your brain is like still racing sort of you know you have like yeah. multiple yeah. ideas on like even like tons of ideas going through your brain and it just doesn't let you fall asleep basically right yeah yeah and this is something that um i had to deal with uh for instance for the last two years because um Every time that I know that I have to wake up next day at a specific time, I had so much like huge problems with just falling asleep because yeah. I was just tired, exhausted because of the work. And I still was thinking about million things at the same time. Yeah. And I was just laying and I was just basically, I felt like I'm being tortured, you know? So right. And is... that, you know, that's why people turn to drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Wink, wink. <laughs> suggestion, suggestion. No, no. Note it down. <laughs> Note it down. <laughs> okay, Jeremy. So, wh wh were you contacted by them? Were you reaching out to companies? Where you when you graduated? Oh man, I I or... was desperate, man. I I I messaged. I probably applied or messaged or emailed or tracked down art directors, probably from sixty different studios, just everywhere, wow. just anywhere that I could, like. I don't care if it was a mobile game studio. I don't care what they're working on. I just wanted to get something, you know? Yeah. So I, I sent my portfolio everywhere. Um, and uh, I, I heard back from two places. Um, and, and one of them was, uh, yeah, with Bethesda and ZeniMax. Nice. So. so they actually um, accepted you for your fundamental work that you had from your college years? Or uh, no, I had, I had a digital art portfolio. Oh, you are right. Okay, okay. Yeah, so when I was working on my thesis, so mm -hmm. the way that I planned out my classes in college was uh, I, I left my senior year pretty open. I got all my credits and I just left that year mostly just to work on my thesis for my painting uh, show and then and then also my concept art portfolio. So I was doing both at the same time. Uh, I worked really, really hard on it. And um, yeah, yeah. And then yeah, that, that was what, what essentially got me the job. Nice. So how, how, they, did your, how did your portfolio look like then? Because <laughs> I'm I'm just yeah. I'm do just, do, just do you have some do you have some works to based show? On what, like... what people are? Uh, oh my god! Uh, want to know? I, yeah, I maybe... do have a couple things. Yeah, go ahead, man. Oh my god! I, you gotta have to wait. I'm, I have to dig it up. That's all right. Uh, and at the same time, just listening to you right now, it it all just comes down to being stubborn. But at the same time, motive like. Yeah. like motivational driven, you know, and, and the passion. And it just all goes into like one, you know, like a vanishing point of like all the things that just being collected at, at the right time, the right place. And you end yeah. up, and you end up um, at the job that you really, you know, wanted to. So, yeah, uh, I, <laughs> I could share them with you. <laughs> I do have a couple images here that are pretty do it! terrible. Uh, I've got a lot of bad art, guys. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna put that out there right now. Yeah, just. Share I'm just this, really just curious for those people this. out there with what kind of portfolio did uh, an art director applied to uh, Zenimax online? Yeah. <laughs> Starting from the uh, bottom, right? Uh, just uh, share this. I... Share the screen on Skype, and I'm just okay. having the uh, transmission screen locked on you. Okay. Let's see. And of uh, course, for oh, people who are watching us, uh, please, you know, feel free to ask questions to Jeremy. Well, we have one question here from Yanis, which I kind of already um, uh, answered in the chat, but we can expand on it. Uh, maybe uh, Jeremy, while showing his work a little bit, can uh, uh, answer that question too. And then later we'll do more questions if there are. But I think it's a good question. So uh, yeah, go ahead, man. He's Jenna starts with, uh, this may be a dumb question. Well, I don't think it is. But do you think it is necessarily helpful to play games to become a good concept artist for video games? Is it understand... necessary to play games? Okay, got it. Yeah. yeah, to understand, for example, how a level is constructed. Yeah, so what do you um, think, Jen? So for me, um, I think it's, that's a really, that's actually a really great question. You it might is. think it's a stupid question, but I think it's a really awesome question. Uh, Cause it is really important to understand games. I, do I think it's absolutely crucial? No, because there are some, definitely some successful concept artists, artists that I know who don't really play that games that much. And I think if there is a role somewhere in game development where the, the concept art, uh, 
or sorry, where where they don't have to be as knowledgeable at game design, it might be concept art because they're a lot of what being a concept artist is purely aesthetic in a lot of ways, right? Mm -hmm. It's like understanding like drawing and design and, and what looks good and visual problem solving. Mm -hmm. But what makes you a better concept artist specifically for games uh, is understanding game design. Um, yes. And it's a little bit different yeah. than, than um, like say if you're working for film or if you're working in animation, which is purely about the story you're yeah. telling a story through a flat image in games it's about the interaction it's about how yes. a player is going to move throughout the space yeah it's about layout you know it, it, there's so much more to consider in an interactive medium that mm -hmm. you don't have to in a in a in like a say a film or a feature yeah, it, or it's, it's it's more on like just structured you know way of like thinking that you just have to really immerse yourself to get to to know the world and to know the mechanics of the game, right? Because the yeah. gameplay is a like plays a huge role on you know when you do designs for in-house, for instance, and you work for a game, like understanding the gameplay and the game mechanics yeah. is a crucial thing, you know, because yeah. it's different when you just do remote work and they just ask you to you know you know do this like nice picture or like design yeah. you know specific scene, but you don't really get like a deeper knowledge on what the story is about what are the limitation you know what sort of characters we are dealing yeah. with and what are their purposes because the purposes and the story that's told in the game also drives the design that you have to convey right totally totally um I, I, I don't want to keep this image up too long. <laughs> it's what making me feel really slot? uneasy just having it here. Um, Mikhail, will you will you critique my uh, plane? <laughs> I mean, if this is the worst you can show, then um, man, it is still pretty good. But yeah, when I have to criticize on it on a AAA uh, <laughs> standard, yeah, your design uh, is completely off there. The the proportions are not. Yeah. Like how many Aaron, Aaron things do you have there? Look at that. Look at look at it. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna hide this now. The, oh the God, more the going. better, man. The more the better. <laughs> no, I I feel bad criticizing. Uh, look at so, you are such a titan like you. Holy shit, this is already. Uh, this very is good. this is. Well, you applied with this to Bethesda? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. Okay. Hey, what's, what's, I, I'm, what's I'm getting that? shy. I want to show more recent stuff, more sketches. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> like, let's scroll for that and like let's listen to your story because I think it's inspirational not only for us but also for people who are watching us. And yeah, just because Gliding, you do, man. because you do yeah. a lot of like personal stuff, and I want to dive into that as well. Can you share well, with us? It's like. It's like something that you just start at school and you just decide, like, I like the idea, I just want to finish it at home. Or is it something that you just do purely out of your, you know, willing to do something uh, when, you, when you're just in your, in your room alone and you just want to, you know, spit some ideas out on the canvas? Yeah, I think, I think personal work has been incredibly crucial for me in getting my next opportunity. Because mm -hmm. um, while I was working on, on Elder Scrolls stuff, it's very, like, dark fantasy Mm -hmm. Um, right. And, and I, I started really getting into John Berkey and John Harris, uh, like those seventies sci-fi illustrators, mm -hmm. uh, like Chris Foss and stuff. And, uh, I started making a lot of personal work that was based around that. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's totally not, you know, the medieval fantasy, but it's, it's more like the sci-fi uh, realm of things. And I just got way, way into it. Right. And, and a lot of my personal work was leaning towards that direction. And, and I just started posting more of that work and I started doing more of that work and it, it, it kind of led me to my next opportunity. Um, and then, you know, what's happened recently is that I, I started, as I was working on Destiny, I was getting kind of, not bored, but just kind of running stale on it because uh, I've been doing it for a while and, and I started doing more painterly work, more like uh, I would, yeah, got exactly. really inspired by Ghibli artists. And, mm -hmm. I think I, I sort of like, I just, when I look at this stuff, like, like even yeah this one for instance i find you have like much more you know joy and and fun exploring your own world because yeah. when you work on like well established brand or or a franchise like destiny even right. though you, they give you some freedom you are always somehow limited by the game itself but by the world that that's being presented to people that's being well received in terms of art yeah. and style yeah. And you sort of have to adjust yourself. But with those, I can feel like, yeah, this is something that, um, 
you know, Jeremy likes doing and he has fun with that, coming up with ideas, you know, doing like a lot of like different worlds locations. This is something that I really enjoy watching as well, you know? Yeah. It, and I just really love painting and it kind of goes back to my roots of being a fine artist and doing oil painting that, um, you know, when working on Destiny, it was a lot of working over 3D, a lot of photo textures. And, and mm-hmm. I, don't get me wrong, I love doing that. Um, it's just, but after a while, I'm just like, well, I love to paint. So how do I get back into my core, you know, in a sense? Um, awesome. And- I love your sense of light and the colors are always so, uh, yeah, you've definitely developed your own style within the industry. Like when I look at these, I know it's you, right? It is. Yeah. Wow, thank it you. Looks, it, it looks very well crafted, taken care of uh, in a very uh, passionate way. It's, uh, yeah, very, very well done. Um, how do you, how would you say, um, um, did you find the, uh, the transition from working for Elder Scrolls into Destiny? And how much of a time gap did you have? And of course, finally, how did you find that job, you know, for Destiny? from Elder Scrolls to Destiny. Right. Um, so <laughs> I had a, a sort of a relationship with uh, High Moon, which is a studio that I joined in San Diego. Um, uh-huh. It was one of the places that I uh, applied to when I was a student <laughs> and I got nice. rejected. And I was like, oh, wouldn't that be cool to live in San Diego and work in games? And that's just what I thought, right? Um, uh-huh. At the time, they were working on Transformers and stuff. But um, mm-hmm. the game? Uh, yeah, the Transformer games, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, when I started looking elsewhere uh, after working on Elder Scrolls, I, I really wanted to work on something different. I didn't want to work on another fantasy, like medieval fantasy thing. I wanted to do, you know, I get bored. Like, I want to try something different. Um, yeah. So uh, I I knew a couple people that worked there, so I just started reaching out to, reaching out to them and applying, and then, yeah, it just sort of worked out. They just happened to be looking for somebody. They just uh, they were working on Destiny, and I, they just thought the, you know, the new personal work that I was doing was fit exactly what they're looking for. So ah. um, we just pulled the trigger on it. So it just kind of happened very naturally and, and very quickly. And I was I was totally excited to get out of my situation, get out of Maryland, and and nice. go somewhere else, <laughs> go someplace warmer without winter, you know. So yeah. how, how the studio actually was being um, art directed with the game? Is it like being like, you know, that the how to say that? It's like you had like a um, higher ups that were just looking from uh, Bungie on your works, or you had yeah. internal art directors and they were actually showing the work to Bungie. How this sort of like collaboration looked like from inside? There, there was quite an evolution of collaboration. It, it started off with uh, us working more directly with Bungie. Um, we would work with uh, the artists there. Um, but of course, as you know, production moves forward, things get a little messy and you need to find a more efficient way to work. Mm-hmm. Um, we had a, at High Moon, there was an art director there. Um, uh, his name is Ivan Power. He's like, got a great name and great artwork. Um, mm-hmm. You guys should check him out. Um, he was the art director there at High Moon and, and we, we basically uh, filtered everything through him, and then we would have meetings with uh, Bungie art directors mm. uh, on like a biweekly cadence, and we just kind of showed them what we're up to and got feedback from them and uh, got feedback from the artists over there as well and, and back and forth, right? Because we were seeing what they were working on as well as they were seeing what we were working on. So um, it took a little while to get like a good collaboration down, but I think you know where we ended up was, was great. Um, yeah, because we basically were working and we were a full development studio working on the Forsaken expansion from the ground up, from uh, the original arts, that's yeah. the original art there, um, to like the sound, to, you know, everything was done uh, at High Moon. Uh, so, um, you know, we, we were able to kind of at a certain point just be a little bit more isolated, more isolated hub and just kind of get things done on our end and then show them a finished product Mm-hmm. Uh, and yeah, that seemed to be the the better working relationship after a while. Nice, you know, to put it lightly. <laughs> nice, nice. You, you nice. also mentioned before when we were talking about your style that you, it, it all comes from like strong, you know, uh, finer skills. Like, can you elaborate on that a little bit more? Like, like when did you start? What mediums did you use? Like, how did they actually help you? with like improving because I, we have some cool questions regarding 
like improving your lighting skills and visualization. I think it, it's sort of like either directionally or indirectionally, it comes from like knowing your way around in, in fine art, like in, in traditional medias. Mm -hmm. uh, it, that's what sort of like helped me for instance, but I'm really interested to hear your take on that. Yeah. And how did you start fine art, like painting and like what was the storyline and are you still doing it today or are you just purely digital? Like, can you just elaborate on that? So that it's interesting because uh, there's a creative process that most creatives follow. If you're a writer, photographer, or, you know, or, or whatever you're doing mm -hmm. is, is sort of, um, you, it's almost like the scientific method, right? You start off with, uh, your, your inspiration. What do you, what is the story you're trying to create? Then you go into references and you, you find, uh, inspiration through other IPs, other artists, maybe, uh, different areas or locations on the planet, maybe history, mm -hmm. maybe, uh, other technology, right. And you start building this library of reference and inspiration, and then you distill those reference and information down to, kind of the essential pieces uh, for your IP. Uh, and then you start generating from there. So I, I think um, just even the idea of creating an image, you start with something simple and then you add complexity over top. So mm -hmm. it, it could be like a like a simple story or a simple narrative, or hey, maybe you just wanna make a, a Star Wars looking image and you start there, right? Mm -hmm. Just having the ability to start from something incredibly simple and then allow yourself to add a little bit of complexity here and there over time mm -hmm. um, was something that I learned from painting. Cause you know, when you're painting traditionally, you just start with like a, you know, a simple wash, like simple drawing, then you just block in your shadows, right? You start very simple and then you can start a little bit more on like the local colors and then yeah. the lighting and, then, you know, little details and polish at the very end. You know, a lot of students, what happens is they, they kind of get in their own way because they think, okay, I want to create a really polished image. So they start with that mentality that I'm going to create a polished image and not starting from a simple structure. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's incredibly important in painting, whether it's like fine arts, if you're working with a model, um, or if you're building a story. And I, I use that same principle in art direction too. Like it, it I think it's a, such a powerful creative process that um, can be used in, in almost anything. Uh, and I try to think about it even when I'm directing um, artists that just start simple, start with yes. the primitive, start with like very, very basic shapes. Don't put too much burden on yourself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, because that's what you'll tend to do. You'll say, well, it's got to be this and this. And it's like, whoa, whoa, slow down. You know, what is what is the shape language? Yeah. You know, what's the feeling? Right. Um, let's start there. And that's a yeah. much easier thing to answer. It's like if you're making a puzzle, you know, you got a thousand piece puzzle. You're going to start with the edge, the corner pieces, because we all know those corner pieces. We're not going to start with the middle pieces. So um, that, that's Very something I always one. try to try to let everyone know. This is such yeah. a powerful process. Yeah, and very, when you execute very that in, and when you execute it in practice, uh, when you say like, um, and when you teach and you explain in a way like, okay, start with the simple things, start with the simple bigger shapes. Um, yeah. I of course agree on that. But how do you execute it? Do you make multiple sketches each and every time to figure out those major shapes, basic language composition, or do you kind of um, start basic and then you expand on one well, I can show you I can show you an example of the image that just popped awesome. up right yeah. here. Yeah. So this was a process that I mm -hmm. sort of started developing in my personal work and it's it's sort of snowballed into like a full on you know digital painting process I guess concept mm -hmm. art process where uh, you start off with uh, just thinking about light and shadow. You just this only think about- This is for you simple, notes. right? Like th this is for you like, okay, this is a uh, major, just blocking yeah. out shapes. This is for you, okay. Yeah, basically. I'm just asking, but this, okay, this already looks amazing, but okay, <laughs> just making well, sure. Well, I could maybe dig around and find something much simpler, but I think this illustrates the point exactly where it's, yeah. it doesn't take very long to just think about light and shadow or mm -hmm. positive, negative, right? Um, yeah. We can say a lot with very little, just only using two values, just using black and white. Um, and this, you know, 
image alone doesn't take very long. It didn't take me very long to do, but it has so much power in that it says everything about this thing. You can tell that this is a, a, a writer. He's a Native American. This is a horse. This is in a forest that you can tell where the lighting is coming from. You can tell how skinny he is. You can, you know, you can see so much about what's happening in the story, yeah. but without ex exerting yourself so much by worrying about the little details and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah so but how long does this took, uh, take you? Like a piece like this? Oh, I don't know. Uh, I did this a while back. Maybe like 30, 40 minutes, 30, 40 minutes. Nice. Just to lock, nice. lock it down, like block it down. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. don't freak out, guys. It just takes time. Of course, Jeremy is fast because he's already super experienced. Uh, it is very normal that if you try to do this, it will take you much longer in the beginning. But yeah, absolutely. Learn, I, right? And and this came from a, an idea that I had um, years ago because when I was when I was at Zenimax, I realized that my drawing was terrible and I was bad at drawing. I was and I always kind of pushed that fundamental aside. But my idea of drawing was different from what drawing really is. So uh -huh. in other words, like my idea of drawing was, oh, we have to do these really thin, really precise line drawings, almost like a like a comic book ink, you know, or like line work. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it doesn't have to be like that. Like no, this to me depends. is drawing. Yeah. Right? yeah. You, you can be right. expressive enough. And as you said, like, you know, this sort of like lockout tells you enough story um, to, to sort of like guide guideline yourself later with placing down details. It's the same with drawing. It can be suggestive. Yeah. It can be very, you know, dynamic. And it's basically in the in the end of the day, it's you who decide how to push it farther to the presentable stage, right? Basically. Yeah, I, like I didn't. I did, I always had it in my head. I mean, that's that's one of those things. It's like you kind of get in your own way. You have these un unnecessary fears, or you have these rules that you think exist but really don't exist you know so drawing um, was your fear Jeremy? drawing was it i didn't know it and i wouldn't have admitted it at the time but it absolutely was it was just something that i i like to paint right so i just want to yeah. block in shape mm -hmm. yeah. but i didn't know that you can use shape to draw you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah well, i didn't that's how understand I started that. because i'm i'm weird and i started to paint later on yeah, yeah. i think we, we all have a, like sort of like our own stories and and i sort of like like relate to what you're saying right now, Jeremy, regarding like blocking out things in the shapes, because in the end of the day, when you decide on the composition or design choice, your creative process doesn't really matter as long as it's good for you. And it lets yeah. you, you know, spam with ideas and share your uh, ideas with your art director or, you know, visual visualize your ideas through you know, through the project to 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 generate the best ideas, no one yeah. really cares like how you do that, right? No one cares right. if you do uh, if you do, for instance, a vehicle design and it looks, you know, the same manner as, for instance, Mikael is doing that. You can have your own way, and this can be still valuable and enough information in your designs uh, as, yeah. as with your drawing skills, for instance, right? So, yeah. but I, so, I sort of like agree that it's good to try different things. Like what we do at school, uh, I used to also paint much more than these right. days when you have to right. like design things like specifically or, you know, separately and you start on drawing and like incorporating <laughs> more line art and yeah. like more sort of like a design process. And basically, however you like, whatever, way you pick and as long as it's presentable and it just basically uh you can generate your ideas through that it doesn't really matter but trying different things is always good mm -hmm. for your uh self-development basically right absolutely and and you know you gotta be true to yourself because you can try to force yourself down a direction that uh, that just you're not comfortable with that doesn't suit you mm -hmm. um I, I get this question a lot because there's a lot of anxiety that a, that students have about 3D using 3D now, mm -hmm. because there's mm -hmm. so many different techniques and tools and all these tutorials that are coming out, and it's a bit overwhelming. Just to mm -hmm. learn one new program takes a lot of time, mm -hmm. um, and I feel like there's a lot of artists who use 3D because they feel they need to because you know Yama's doing it, right? Yeah, because and, they are told it, to. It's a, yeah. it's a it's a totally different thing than. Like for instance, you are using 3D for instance to sort of like, you know, give yourself a 
for instance, faster construction, but you know your perspective, you know your, yeah. you know your lighting, you know the value yeah. structure, so you don't totally rely on that. Until, yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, when yeah, it's like, needed because of the production mm -hmm. in restrictions and, for instance, your uh, game designer send you uh, 3D block out to paint over or draw on top, yeah. it's fine. But if your way is just to block out like black and white shapes in 2D and whether you take it to 3D or not is basically a totally personal thing. Yeah, I, I, I think the the way to approach it that I've come up with is, is like... Um, rather than do it for the sake of doing it, rather than doing 3D for the sake of it, you should really analyze what it is that you're getting out of using 3D. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, for me, exactly. like, I fucking, oh, sorry, yeah. am I allowed to swear? No, uh, go ahead, it's okay. Like... No, I'm fine with it, really. I okay. miss it, actually. <laughs> okay. I I just hate drawing ellipses in perspective. Like, who likes drawing ellipses in perspective? Maybe Mihal does. I do, I do, I do yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm weird, don't listen to me. So it's fine. But I hate doing that. So, I mean, that's an area, that's a small thing, a small example, but that's an area where 3D can actually benefit me. Exactly. It actually adds to my normal workflow. I'm not trying to replace my workflow with 3D. I'm mm -hmm. just letting it help me in certain areas that I feel are either a weak spot or an area that needs to be pushed a little bit more. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So basically yeah. you use it like just like as another tool, basically. It's, it's another some, tool. It's yeah. something that might help me. I might need that, but it's not necessary for your, for instance, uh, personal approach yeah. because your, yeah. your basic and fundamental skills let you do stuff that you don't really need 3d for and i see for instance plenty of like 3d people use for just landscapes like hmm, yeah like really you can just either paint it or photo bash it and yeah. i guess the time wise you can be pretty similar like in terms of fast you know results i yeah. totally i totally get it when you do the level design and you have to totally, you know yeah. rotate everything scroll through that fly over that area it's fine, I mean, but if yeah, you just do one shot, man, like what the fuck? Like it's not. A lot of this work is is over designer geo, and they're just designer geo is just boxes basically, and then yeah, I can either bring in my mesh or I can use their mesh or just use other assets from the game as a base to start painting over. Yeah, so, but at the yeah. same time, because it might sound like I couldn't like it, sort of controversial, you know, topic, but at the same time. I feel and I I believe we all can agree that having that m at least minimal knowledge on 3D these days, being a constant artist or art director or, you know, whatever you do in terms of design is a crucial thing, you know, because you, you never know when you will be uh, asked to use that. And sure. of course, the more versatile you are, I always tell it to my students, the more versatile you are, the more uh mm -hmm. priceless and the more valuable uh your art is basically prices in yeah. terms of it can mm -hmm. be even you know more expensive i guess like it's, it's it's sort of like hard to explain but the way that you know more stuff it only can be beneficial for you and even if you want to stay truthful to yourself and do the stuff just by drawing mm -hmm. things or painting is fine but maybe your art director or production designer troll throws at you some 3D model and it's like, oh, can you just, you know, sort of like render it out in Octane or whatever and paint on top or just, you know, do a quick overpaint with some design notes for mm -hmm. me. And this this shows your versatility that you comes that you come with as a concept artist and the way you are able to adjust to the production pipeline, which is another thing that sort of makes you very valuable asset, right? Yeah. Because in the end of the day, we are assets, right? Of course, we are yeah. part of like a bigger structure. We are part of the big team and we deliver designs. And whether it's like based on like this or that technique, it doesn't really matter as long as we are, you know, able to adjust to, to being a, a, you know, into the production per pipeline, right? Yeah. And, and, and like, you know, this, this, for example, was based on a, a 3D mesh. It's like... It, I really like it because it it's like I get get back to the idea of drawing where drawing can be shape drawing can be to me sometimes 3D is like drawing it's uh -huh. just drawing in a different medium you know what I mean yes. like um, and it's, sometimes I just get stale if I approach the problem by just trying to draw and paint my way out of everything sometimes you need to approach the problem using a different tool um, 
And that's something that's that I've been well, learning very, more and more. Very nice way to put it. It's just another tool. It is just another way to express your ideas and to yeah. communicate them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the, and when you were working on a mesh, for example, on the Destiny uh, two pieces, um, were those uh, scenes already kind of rendered? Were you able to render and play with the lighting, or was it just like you know mesh in viewport and there you go? Yeah, very, very good question. Like, what, what were your restrictions regarding lighting and like sort of like mod direction for that? You were fully uh, responsible for that, or? Yeah, there there was no direction in terms of that. Um, but there are some basic game design fundamentals that are kind of more widely known. It's just like if you have a level or a scene and you want the player to go from this door, fight the enemy, and then go to another door to exit, usually you put a light at the door that you want the player to go, right? Mm -hmm. um, so you usually Guidance, light yeah. the area that is the focal point, and it should be the focus of, of where you want the player to be. So mm -hmm. in instance here, this is a, an area where you fight a boss, so we're only lighting the central area where the boss comes out yeah, of this of course. Of this cell right so uh, it's it's pretty basic but i think that just even that fundamental is is enough to get by on lighting um right. for the for this painting and uh this was a mesh that uh was dropped in here um in the scene in the level and i just sort of uh uh, I painted over all the materials and stuff. So this was a, is this, a heavy is this kind of. Through. Is this kind of a sorry to interrupt? Is this kind of a hibernation cell? What is this? Yeah, like, it communicates it's, it's to a, me like yours should be like hibernated and freezing. Yes. And okay, see, it's a it's a prison cell. <laughs> ah, okay. where, they, where they freeze the the big bad guys, <laughs> uh -huh. and then the bad guys break out of the cell, and you have to fight them all. Awesome. So, so um, like. I don't know, maybe you can leave behind right now Destiny stuff and move on to the your next position, which actually... Yeah, is man, it's getting boring. <laughs> so, no, it's like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> 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 it's like, I'm just gonna bring back this main title uh, because uh, we, we started like talking about your art direction journey and yeah. I would love to hear um, maybe more about how actually it, it came through all together and you know what you are looking for as a as an art director in your studio maybe some people might find it valuable and you know what you basically look for uh in terms of like um i don't know, like a hunting a new concept artist for your studio because i think this would be a very interesting topic to, to go yeah through next. yeah so i like I said, I, I get bored and I want to try different things. So mm -hmm. um, I put a like I, it's a personal philosophy of mine that I, I put a much higher value on new opportunities to learn rather than, you know, just doing the same thing over and over again. So, um, you know, there, there are some artists who love to just they have their one, you know, kind of subject that they love doing and they just they do it masterfully and they do it over and over again. Yeah. I kind of, I'm kind of the opposite where I'm just like, you know, that's cool and all, but I'm kind of getting bored and I'm interested in other things right now. So um, where can I learn? Where, where, where can I have an opportunity to learn something new and just throw myself in the deep end and try to learn how to swim again? Mm -hmm. um, so this is an opportunity that uh, came to me uh, through, through friends uh, that I knew at Riot. They, they got me in touch with a couple guys who had just left Riot to start a new uh, new game studio. And uh, I, I've heard a lot of these pitches before, like, hey, we're making a new game. We need your help. And it always sounds boring and derivative. But this was something that was very interesting and personal to me mm -hmm. that I thought could be really amazing and something that hasn't really been done yet, but should be done. Um, I can't. I can't honestly go into detail on anything because we're we're dark right now. We're not gonna go public probably not till another year or so. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but yeah, they they just had the pitch and you know we started knocking around ideas and I started doing some sketches and and then they got uh, seed funding from uh, from venture capital. So we're like, okay, you know, we have funding now. We can I can quit my job and we can actually start this thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you know. So I've you, been working you, in games. So you've been huh? a team of founders of the studio? Yeah, I, I was, uh, the two are founders, and I was the first person to join them after they got their funding. So okay. I was, it was just us three working in a spare bedroom mm -hmm. uh, to start. And um, yeah, so like, uh, what was I saying? Like, uh, I was like getting, yeah, I was just getting bored working on the same stuff over and over again. So I really wanted to try something different. And this is, 
around the same time that my my personal work was kind of leaning towards this direction. Again, that's where I think per, personal work is so important. Um, mm-hmm. yes. And uh, and like I just started making art with the for the, with the guys. Just started you know brainstorming on what we could do, how this world could look, and doing a lot of writing. And it was a really great time. And that's where I created the, these images here um, for the for the product. And mm. um, nice. Yeah. As time go, went on, like the we started needed to, you know, we're, we need to make a game, right? So we need to hire an art team. Um, so and like I said to you guys before, actually, like uh, these are mm-hmm. actually, sorry, these are actually pieces already for the game. You are allowed to show them. Yeah, we uh, released a few images. It was tough to hire artists without showing any art. The art style, <laughs> oh, yeah. well. right? So, um, I. I I, uh, I I thought it was important to share at least some images while people are so, wondering what we're doing. So, so these awesome. were also sort of like a benchmark for art style in general, and also what you look for uh, in people works that you you know you just want to interview or hire them. Yeah, uh, yeah. So for who I'm looking for, uh, like I, I was talking to you guys earlier, is we're working on a bit more of a stylized game. So there are certain fundamentals that are really important to me, which is uh, drawing and 2D design, uh, understanding exaggeration, shape language, yes. um, you know, style, like having good taste. Um, those are things that are incredibly important to me where I'm looking for an artist. Um, and, you know, this is a much more painterly game. You know, it's very much inspired by uh, Ghibli background painting, uh, it, yeah. which is a huge inspiration for me. So, yeah. um you know, the, moving away from the hard surface and the technology, you know, going completely opposite direction mm-hmm. that I was working on Destiny. Um, well, maybe not completely the opposite. Of it course, shows some your versatility, that. you know. It shows that with strong fundamentals, you can redirect yourself and pull off something that is in a different style. I agree. This is this is a totally different style than the stuff that you did for uh, Destiny. Mm-hmm. Like I can yeah. still see it as the same person, but it is so insp- inspiring to see how you're able to switch your weapon gear and go to war with uh, with a different gear set, basically. Yeah, and, and um, yeah, and for me, it's it, it always goes down to the same creative process. Doesn't matter what you're working on. Yeah, you know, it's 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 having the idea, the inspiration, you know. Um, finding uh, inspiration through other sources and narrowing those sources and then beginning to, to sketch from, from that position forward. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what art direction really is. It's, it's communicating uh, like a broader vision of the art uh, through yeah. other art, right? Um, you need to speak the language of art, uh, yes. but the fundamentals are always the same, you know, doesn't matter what you're working on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How is it easier for you to communicate to other artists as an art director? I actually have two questions. Question number one is uh, because I, I'm just immersing myself in the people that are watching it. And, and I am just curious, how do you work as an art director? Is it easier and slash more, more efficient for you to communicate what you need from your concept artist to show it through an image like this or explaining it in words? Uh, see, yeah, that that is the hard thing that I've had to learn um, uh-huh. because initially it was just, I'll just paint over the image. I'll just do a sketch. I'll just like give them the answer or a answer. Mm-hmm. And something I've had to learn to let go over time is trying to, you know, handhold every single situation. Um, I've kind of had to learn to back up a little bit and just ask the question, does it fit the tone? Does it answer the question? I um, see. So if it if it fits the tone and it answers the question, but it, it may not be the, the answer that I would give personally, but as long as it fits within the tone and answers the question, that's more important. And and that's what makes this uh, a collaboration. It's not just about me micromanaging every decision. It's about sort of like... Uh, you know, it's not like controlling the waves. You're kind of you're kind of surfing. You're just riding the waves. Yeah. You're going like, okay, that's not what I would have thought of, but hey, you know what? It kind of works. It's weird. Exactly. It's a little different. Yeah. And this this artist will feel really great if we just let it go and and let it be in the game and you know have it be a thing, right? I um, see. And that's what just makes I think that's what makes every product uh, more interesting is the diverse ideas and the diverse opinions that that get to 
you know, yeah. feeding. Because I, I guess you have this mixture of ownership, like it is like your kind of baby and you want everyone to take care of it. But I guess yeah. in the long run, it becomes impossible to impact everyone with what is exactly in your head, right? Yeah. So you yeah. kind of also have to have a mixture of, okay, I'm the art director, you're a concept artist, you kind of have to do what I uh, dictate or brief, but in the end, you also want to give them a sense of freedom because they're artists too, right? In the end. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. And, and me being a concept artist for, for years, like I, I kind of understand that feeling, I understand the yeah. frustration, I exactly. understand the apprehension that can yeah. happen. I try to make sure that all my artists understand clearly the goal yeah. and I don't feed them the answer. Yeah. I let them find it. And that's yeah. also the big difference between the art director who actually has practical and theoretical knowledge on design process or basically creating concept art than to someone who basically uh, has no idea at all. And like I think mm -hmm. uh, we sort of like brought up this topic uh, quite a few times knowing and having experience working with uh, concept artists with art directors actually who were not active or who are not really into concept art at all and those yeah. who are basically an artist and this is like a, the difference is huge the difference is basically you cannot even you cannot even measure that you cannot even compare that because yeah. um as you said, you have this sensibility of world, of shapes, design, lighting, you know, composition, mm -hmm. storyline, everything. And you are a creative person that basically changes the role, but at the same time, you don't really change it as much. You know, yeah. maybe yeah. you, of course, do less art practically because you have people under your guidance and you have to direct them but you still are, you know, actively uh, active part of concept team, right? So this is yeah. a big difference. And, and I think we all had this experience working with people who were like that. And at the same time, who were not really active or who are not really into concept art. And this is super fucking frustrating to work with people yeah, like that, yeah. you know? Yeah, I, I mean, the concept artists have two important jobs uh, in, in production. It's to one, inspire and one to inform yeah uh and and that is so important and not every concept artist can do both some can do both yeah. but you need different types of artists um now the the ones that we see on art station all the time are the inspire artists those are the artists that you, you give them like a, a simple brief and some shapes and they'll make an amazing painting right like you guys yes, right like exactly like yeah. just make some great stuff and then and then there's the production concept artist who needs to be in there working with the environment artists, you know, drawing sketches, doing napkin sketches, yeah, like solve, solve problems on many levels. Yeah. And something that usually you don't really want to post. That's why, that's why yeah. most of us. And I think we, we talked about it as well with John and James last time. And we sort of feel like responsible for that because we show a usually likable works yeah, in, totally. uh, online, right? Something that we, uh, we just like to milk ourselves with lights and shit or whatever, but it's not something that we, uh, I think major, major of time, majority of time we do, uh, solving, uh, visual problems, uh, working in production per like in production. Platform. Yeah. So that's yeah, totally that, different. That's... that's sort of a different thing. And I agree with you on that. So... Yeah. That's, that's the thing as an art director though. When I'm looking for an in, internal concept artist, I need somebody who can draw and who can problem solve on paper quick. Yeah. Um, if I need a pretty painting, I can I can contract that out to a number of artists. Yeah. <laughs> like, you yeah. know what I mean? I can outsource that easy, yeah. right? But when it comes to like really really understanding game design, really understanding our limitations, Visual communication, yeah, yeah. like I, I need somebody who can draw, and, and that's is, number one. This is also the skill that you acquire, uh, like what I usually recommend people is to try at least once in your life working in the and like in house because but by then by that you can you can really get into like the production pipeline understanding the behind the scenes yeah. and the concept art is not only about pretty pictures as you said right so yeah. this is something yeah, that people need to understand but they need to first experience that firsthand from behind the scenes to understand that process 
and totally. then you can juggle both worlds you can do personal stuff that looks amazing and it's like illustration sort of driven and for the clients you can solve problems very quickly roughly dirty ugly whatever but yeah. it definitely serves the purpose right and it it makes you a better artist because no long not not only does your painting look pretty but it functions it absolutely. works exactly. absolutely yeah, yeah. Yeah. So to follow up with question number two, that said, are you guys, uh, for people that are looking at it and maybe looking for a job, are you guys still looking for more concept artists? <laughs> uh, we're, we're good. I think we're at our capacity. We have three full-time artists, and uh, wow. but we, we are working. Sorry. <laughs> we do work with a lot, of, uh, a lot of artists around the world, though. So, okay. um, so you, cool. so you, so you I'm, actually I'm do a lot of outsource anyway, because when we were talking before on uh, session, yeah. you, your like main and strong art core team is all uh, located in States, right? In LA area, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Santa Monica. And Santa Monica. And then you, mm -hmm. you just outsource stuff like 3D modeling or also designing or like more promotional stuff. Well, what's that basically? Can you elaborate on that? So, uh, er Early on, like I said, um, you know, this game, this product, this IP is a collaboration. I, I don't want to, you know, manhandle everything. Mm -hmm. So early on in the production, I, I tapped a lot of different artists to help out, maybe do an image or a concept here and there, just to get a variety of, of diversity and, uh, and, and just kind of, uh, you know, like, like adding spice to the pot, right? And I just want to see what's the out there. Inspire yeah. the team as well. Yeah, it's very inspirational. It's like those postcard images that that Bungie uh, used to do all the time. Um, yeah, and I worked with them, and we've kind of got like a, a nice uh, set of images that are what I call keystone images. These are the the inspirational images that we want to hopefully have our game look exactly like these, right? Um, so once I have those, uh, then. We're in the position now where we're heading more into production. So now we need to make all those things a reality. <laughs> so we need to create more concepts based on those uh, really pretty high-level images. Mm. So um, so initially, like I was doing paintings like this. I was doing one of these a day, months. I've, I've got a, a huge library of images. And there's a lot of you them. machine, you do one a day of these. All right, fuck. All right. <laughs> And can I, Jeremy? Can you can you fix? Um, because I think you touch your microphone and your 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 sound is actually muted a bit. Yeah, we're not hearing you, man. You're not hearing me at all. Oh, that's, that's no, good. No, that was there. Good. That was good. Go. Okay. Um, yeah. So th that's that's why I get back to the inspire and inform part of concept art. Early on, it's the inspire, mm -hmm. and then when we actually have to build it, we have to start informing. Yeah. So we need to be. Uh, Architects and and create create schematics, you know, basically yes. for the level for the 3D layout, artists. game design, yeah. back yeah. engineer yeah. stuff, basically, awesome. right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, I cannot wait to share the art book. It's gonna be it's gonna be awesome. So what what's your goal for like <laughs> nice. releasing date? Like is like because you said that you are going into production. Like I guess you probably gonna build like a like a whole team right now of programmers yeah. or you know game designers like not only art artists of course. right yeah. yeah so people who are responsible for all different you know sort of like branches of the one production uh, yeah. so what's your like a like milestone basically plan for that if you can share with us uh i mean i can't go into too much detail i mean we've we have a full development team we have all our engineers we have animators mm -hmm. you know we've got uh, we've got a production pipeline set up. Um, uh, it's, like I said, we're kind of moving away from the prototype phase and moving more into production phase. Mm -hmm. So um, that should say something. I really can't talk too much about that, but uh, yeah. NDA. <laughs> so basically, we have yeah. to look forward or uh, like to, to see more else awesomeness from you. Yeah, it's probably at this about point. Like that's here. the best we can do. Maybe with this virus, it might delay things a little but I, I don't think it should really i think one more year is what we're thinking awesome so, so, so yeah with with that said um i don't know we could because we want to keep this an hour and i know we are we don't want to steal much of your time but do you think um you have uh do you think that we missed something you want to say something to uh the people shall we maybe answer some questions um yeah hold on yeah I, something I, 
I'd be uh, curious to hear what people have questions about. So I think you already answered this question because here we have an individual asking about how is Singularity 6 doing and how are you enjoying functioning in a smaller studio compared to your previous works with Bethesda and Bungie. I think yeah. we talked about that, right? Yeah, that's the thing, right? It's like, yeah. uh, I, I, like I said, I put a higher value on new experiences. I've gotten my fill of new experiences. Uh, yeah. yeah, insane. But I've learned so much. And, yeah. you know, I, I do, this doesn't mean I'm going to art direct at my next studio or my next job. But, um, I mean, I've learned yeah, just an incredible learned. amount. Yeah. As for, for communicating skills alone. Here is another question by uh, Monkey D. Heron. Question to Jeremy, so it's for you again. Do you feel like teaching at school changed you as an artist or even helped you grow as an artist? Mm, like teaching? Yeah. 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 Uh, I, I would say that teaching has has been the single most important thing for me to uh, learn how to art direct. Because when you're a teacher, you have to learn how to communicate ideas, speak the language of art, um, try to get other artists on the same page as you and Absolutely. try to get them on the same wavelength as you. Mm -hmm. And it, it that is so incredibly important as a job uh, of an art director is to make sure that you're, everyone's communicating and everyone's on the same page and everyone's clear about the direction. And that's not just um, the artists, that's also the the producers and the engineers and the, you know, all the designers who are not necessarily artists. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to also communicate that vision to them and have them understand it. Yeah. Um, so teaching is so important. It's been the best training for what I'm doing now. Nice. Um, but for, as for being a concept artist, I think when I first started teaching, I, I taught at this art school called MICA, Maryland Institute College of Art, um, back in 2012 or 13. And um, that was such an eye-opening experience because I would start teaching the class and then the students would have questions about what I just said. Not like questioning what I said, but just asking questions around it. And yeah. I'm just like, shit. That's a good question. Yeah. I really need to think about that. And it <laughs> yeah. forces you to kind of like go back into your fundamentals and, and really think about at a very simplified level how why you make the decisions you make. You make hundreds of decisions when you're making art. Like, mm -hmm. why did you make that decision? Exactly. And, and sometimes being... it's like our subconscious. And me and Darek also sometimes like we're talking after class like, shit, we really have to update our ways of how we explain yeah stuff absolutely to because yeah. because sometimes like what you exactly say it is like sometimes you learn something you never talk about it it's kind of in your system you just do it you never talk about it no one asks questions about it but when you start teaching that's yeah. when you have to actually communicate about it yeah how you got there the, because it's very difficult sometimes because you do a lot of things subconsciously and you just you just you just say things that for you are uh so obvious and for others who are actually, um, you know, learning something new from you, it's not very. Yeah. It's it's more like it's it's basically it's something that you just have to explain more in depth, and and then we start asking ourselves a question. Is I think th this is the best lesson when you are a teacher because you are actually questioning yourself, and you start asking uh, asking yourself a question: Why? Am I doing things in that way or another? Right. And in right. the end of the day, I believe it also helps us both, or actually I think all of us here, um, to get better artists as well, because we became more aware of why we are doing things we are doing, you know, mm -hmm. in, in a way we are yeah. doing. So. And, and I had teachers that now that I look at it, I'm like, it's just lazy, where they'll say things like, oh, you cannot have like uh, the horizon line in the center of the image or they'll <laughs> yeah. just make up these stupid rules that I held on to and I thought they were like real mm -hmm. and then I, and then the teacher that just says that that doesn't explain why they feel that way and why yes. sometimes you can break that rule mm -hmm. um, it's guidance. really misleading for students yeah. and I tried to not to say too many rules but just explain why that might feel more dynamic or less dynamic or exactly. maybe you're trying to say yeah. something and it, it, yeah. it brings up another, another time the same topic that you mentioned before that um, people are bombed with the knowledge these days by people by 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 artists who are you know showing their way around and they say this is the right way or another or you know you have to do it this way 
and basically yeah. i guess people can get lost because there is so much information from multiple artists uh, and you have to do a proper research on yeah. who is actually worth listening to right yeah there's and a this lot is also of the hard this yeah. is also the hard this is also the hard experience that you have to acquire and for instance for you right now because you are in the, in the position that you are in and you are able to judge okay this guy who taught me five years ago about you know composition he was basically bullshitting me and by, yeah. by, back then you thought like this guy is like you know my hero and maybe he's like saying the right things but you actually you know got enlightened and you see like oh this was all bullshit right and and I think this is also something that is so hard for people these days to pick up the right, uh, the, the right source of like, edu I, I think educational source basically. So the right yeah. people that they can learn from and the right school <clears throat> or the right course they can uh, pick up from and like shameless, you know, promotion here, I guess. Uh, <laughs> Jeremy is also uh, running classes at Brainstorm. Uh, we are running a focal point and I think um, why we are bringing up this subject is because we are aware of like, uh, um, you know, what's bullshit, what's not in terms of teaching, right? Yeah, I mean, totally. Like one thing that always comes up for an example is um, people, we always have the conversation about tangents in the class. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're like, and, and people are so keen on pointing on a tangent. They're like, that's a tangent there, that's a tangent there. Yeah. And I'm like, wait, hold on a second. Like, are we in agreement that tangents are all bad? Like sometimes tangents can help you. Sometimes tangents can add tension to your story. Sometimes yeah. they can draw focus to a focal point. So not all tangents are bad. It's just the unintentional ones or the ones that are drawing focus away from your story are the ones that are bad. So let's get out of the let's get out of here that this all tangents thing is bad. You know, my, let's my, really my, talk about what my favorite one is the rule of thirds. And like when someone yeah. is teaching you like composition, it's like Oh, you have to do that in those like points when they just, you know, yes. sort of like crossing each other. It's like, yeah. no, <laughs> no, you don't need to. You can break no. the rules and create the amazing compositions. I always bring, uh, like bring up, for instance, um, yeah. the first time when they were shooting um, Saving Private Ryan, the movie. And mm -hmm. there was like the, um, a Polish guy, Kaminski, who's working like, he's just basically right hand of, of Spielberg on all his movies. And he was basically coming up with all those crazy ideas of like showing the camera angle that's being attached basically to the helmet. So you are yeah. you are you are basically seeing like all the chaos seen by uh, seen by uh, the eyes of the soldier. And it was like nothing that you could just learn from this from the from the school books about the composition of the cinematography on the like, camera direction. Yeah. It's something that you just have to break the rules sometimes to create a new ones, right? So it all yeah. the, like rule of first, like for me, it's like the biggest bullshit. Yeah, it, it, it and, works. It works, of course. <laughs> I, I'm not going to say it doesn't, yeah. but you don't need to stick to that to create amazing compositions. And in some yeah. of your works that you are scrolling for right now, mm -hmm. I see that there is like no rule of first and the composition is still very immersive and it's even better because it's dynamic, it's organic and you don't fucking care, right? Yeah, it. You know, the, the, I, that's a good point, the rule of thirds thing, because that comes up too, is that it's not about thirds, it's about balance. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's more about having your subjects and your story balanced. Mm -hmm. And that's all it is. And sometimes a big empty space in your a composition could have just as much just as much weight as like a really noisy detailed yeah. piece in your composition and those need to balance each other it so can it, be in, it can be impactful no matter what and no matter what ratio also you are using you can use two to one you can use three to one yeah you can just do like fucking panorama and you can still Fibonacci create, sequence or something yeah and you can still <laughs> create like a you know incredible immersive composition and um, it would be hard to just fit the stiff, um, you know, uh, rules into specific ratios. And for instance, if you work for movies, you have 235 to one. Uh, if you have like a promotional pieces, it's 16 to nine. And you can just basically all differently break down the composition rules and play it yeah. with yourself, yeah. right? Yeah, I mean, you look at uh, artists like Renoir, like all yeah. of his paintings were like, 
criticisms on composition rules from the era before. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's breaking all these composition rules in his paintings, but they all still look beautiful and they still tell a story. Yeah. Um, you can so. have like a chaos, you can have like a Sorolla paintings and you can see like yeah. multiple, you know, kids on the beach and just, you know, running away, running, running around. And you don't need to just have like a one specific, like, um, you know, rural third crossing, like one child, white, one child is basically exactly in this point. It can be just one focal point because maybe one, one guy has like a more speck on his skin. For instance, right? It yeah, can be a focal yeah. point, and you are just basically judging that. You you basically are are directing your own pieces, right? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. So the moral of the story is uh, art, concept art. I mean, there are a lot of logical, almost mathematical rules that you have to abide to: lighting, shadow, materials. But it is still a very creative process. Yeah, very and organic. You know, very and a creative nice. process doesn't have perfection. It doesn't have rules that you have to abide to so yeah. that's why i also think it's beautiful that's why for example Derek here he started with painting then he picked up drawing right. uh, i started with drawing and started to paint l later you started also like only with fundamentals and then you picked up digital and then later you started to draw and you mm -hmm. know we are all here we are working uh, on our passion um living our dreams to a point to into a yeah. sense yeah. i mean uh, a lot of, of course, people will think that we're living a dream, but in the end, guys, believe us, life is still very, very hard for us. And also, we don't want to avoid the, the topic because, you know, if we don't talk about it, it's kind of deranged. We are very aware of, you know, the virus that is uh, impacting us all. It is yeah. impacting families, health. Most importantly, it is uh, affecting a lot of businesses, including ours. It is affecting our school. We had to cancel our whole term. Yeah. And uh, with that said... Um, I just wanted to, uh, yeah, of course, thank everyone. And if Jeremy, if you have some final words to say, words of wisdom, things that you <laughs> yeah, I think it's a, about... it's a very good conclusion on your side. And maybe before we just wrap it up, I think there is one question. Um, maybe Jeremy, you can of course pick it up because I believe it's to you. Okay. Uh, it's from David uh, Deferis. Uh, if there is uh, basically how to improve one one's edge work, how to know when a brush stroke should be soft or sharp. I think this is a good question mm. based on what you are showing us here because you have a lot of like loosey edges, you have a lot of construction still. Yeah. So I think that would be very good. a long answer, I think. I, but yeah, but yeah. I think it's worth to... How much just... time do you have? <laughs> how much time, uh, how you much time do you have, actually? <laughs> no, just let's go through this question and right. then we can wrap it up. Uh, we can look at we can look at this image because it it kind of has a lot of variety of edges um, and it has a clear story. Um, you see, there's areas here where the edges get a little bit soft, and then there's some sh sharper edges here and there. Um, you can use edges to define form. Mm -hmm. um, I think I have some other examples. Maybe I don't. Uh, anyways, you can use edges to define form. Like if there is like an anatomy, or if you're if you're painting a figure, the shoulder where the where there's a bone there, you might want to put a harder edge there. And if if you want to show the soft meat kind of wrapping around the the form, then you can use a softer softer edge there. Um, that's a way of defining form. Another way of using edges is to uh, define contrast. Uh, in a composition like it, that goes back to composition it goes back to balance um, we want to tell our viewer where to look in the scene right so we don't want our viewer to be so focused on this top edge or this edge over here the painting is not about the foliage the painting is about the character in the middle so i use a, a nice variety of sharp edges and soft edges to draw focus here along with uh, noise contrast and detail um, where I use a lot of softer edges are kind of around the edges of the painting here um, on the tops and the sides just to avoid too much uh, focus in the wrong areas that are not that I'm not trying to tell the story yeah. um, mm -hmm. and that's seen here in, in the final sketch which yeah, uh, yeah. beautiful yeah awesome. um, so yeah, a lot of sharp edges on the figure and the focal point, but then a lot of this is just a bush, like blurry, mushy mess of yeah. blobs. But you still, know. just a structural suggestion. It is very, it's very rough. It's very loose, but at the same yeah. time, you sort of like paint in a way that you, you know, um, imitate the shape already, right? It's basically yeah, like I... a, it's basically like a drawing, but with a bigger brush, basically, right? 
Yeah, I want you to just feel it and not see it. Like you don't need to see every little leaf in the tree back here. Mm, so I just want you to feel it. Say, yeah, beautiful. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, so guys, I... that is a short story of how to become an art director. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Uh, I think it's uh, it's time to wrap it up. Um, thank you, Jeremy, for uh, joining us. It's been a pleasure. I think uh, we should definitely be more in touch and maybe once in a while, yeah, we if should. you want to join us, uh, we can do just, you know, this, you know, casual talk. I hope people enjoy this and uh, we, of course, yeah. are coming back with more stuff. So yeah please everyone thank yeah. you uh to jeremy for joining us amazing session and we are back soon with another one thank you very much thanks guys thank you so much jeremy take care take care everyone in these dark days <laughs> <laughs>